Arataki Ito, the one and only, has received a pretty awesome upgrade with the brand new character Chiori, and I've been testing him in that team as well as all the other teams I could think of, with and without her, to find out exactly how good Mono Geo is in the Fontaine meta, to find out if you should wish for him, and how to make the most of him if you do. Welcome to Jello Impact, where we build and test every single character to help you decide who you want to wish for and build. Ito is a five star claymore geo on field dps who does his damage using fun combos with a very large aoe to maximize his damage he's best played on teams with a minimum of three geo characters because of how much goro buffs his entire kit his skill generates decent energy and does a pretty sizable geo mini nuke he's a character that scales off raw stats so it's important that if you use him you invest well into his artifacts weapons and teammates He's a character that generally speaking always works but is rarely the best option, which has its own pros and cons. If he's a character you love and you highly invest into Ito, he's someone who's reliable and solid for any content really no matter what, even though if you're going for optimality, there's usually something you can do that would be better. He's definitely a very expensive character requiring a large amount of resin and primo gem investment to really make him shine. So once again, just make sure that if you do decide to go for for him, that you really dig in, buckle down, and get ready to invest. Still, if you do, he is a character that will reward you for that investment, and I found his playstyle overall very fun, very satisfying, and despite not having the best resin and artifact investment into my Edo, I was still pretty happy with the damage that he was able to do. He actually has a pretty decent variety of teammates, with definitely a couple options that stand above the rest, so let's talk about those now. The first team is obviously Mono Geo, which is literally that, using four characters. It's the only true Mono team I can think of because normally you'll at least want to use one Animo, but obviously being Geo doesn't have synergy with Animo characters. The reason why this team really is his best is that he benefits massively from Goro, and Goro gives his best buff when there are at least three Geo teammates in the party. And because his buff is team-wide, it is beneficial to use another character on the team that can benefit from Goro such as Chiori or of course Albedo. Zhongli being the final slot for the Mono Geo comp, although he isn't completely necessary and you can get away with a second offensive character like Albedo, now you are running without a dedicated defensive character. And although Goro can do a tiny bit of healing with his C4, I personally found that the healing was not enough to sustain through aggressive enemies. So my overall favorite Edo team lands right here. Now I will preface with a caveat though, I've only been testing Ito for a number of days. If you're someone who has played Ito or plans to play Ito a lot, I imagine that you can probably find alternative combos that allow you to do more dashes and dodges because I find it's very nice to have someone like Zhongli on the team for Ito because he is, he does have optimal combos and ways that you want to string his attacks together. I found the difference between when I was really using his combos and not was a pretty large large damage increase. And we will talk about his combos later, but just so you know, that's kind of why I especially prefer to have Zhongli on the team, is it makes it easier to execute those combos. The second reason why Zhongli is so good here is because Geo Resonance actually requires a shield to decrease Geo Res on top of obviously Zhongli's Omni Shred that he gives already. Now you can get the Geo Res from Crystallized Shields, but they're a little bit unreliable and obviously the defensive utility is not the same. So that's generally generally why I prefer the Mono Geo comp. This is admittedly a very expensive comp. You want to have Ito, he really wants his weapon, if not an R5 Serpent Spine, which are both very expensive no matter how you look at it, and then not one, but two five-star teammates, and on top of that, you want a Constellation 6 Goro, because his C6 really, really matters to the team damage. I imagine that if you don't have Goro's Constellation 6, the team probably feels a bit underwhelming, especially compared to the very powerful free to play options like aggravate hyper bloom etc that we have in the game and of course if you already have albedo now you've got chiori looking at you also being a sizable upgrade to albedo i personally noticed that the upgrade felt significant going from Chiori albedo to chiori i tested them both at the same investment and it was a significant increase from my testing. So that's Mono Geo. Um, you can play similar Mono Geo, but you sub out Chiori for Yolan. Yolan will not fully utilize her Rain Swords 
swords or her rain arrows or whatever they are because Ido just weaves in normal attacks he doesn't do he, he he does normal attacks through his combo but a bunch of his combo is just straight charge attacks which won't proc Yulon. so it is a bit of a waste but she's still giving the damage percent buff to Ido. it's not as good as Chiori but I think math wise it's a little bit better than Albedo so that's an option if you happen to have Yolan free Yolan does require a lot of energy recharge to keep this up I found myself cheating by my account standards and using her C1 even with Fav but it's definitely doable without I was just kind of lazy to switch around artifact the next team that was cooked up was one recommended to me by Jay Stern who I also learned Ito's combos from so definitely check him out in the description he's a great theory crafter and avid Ito main but it's Ito with Farina um Goro is built on a healing build with lots of defense maybe even healing bonus depending on how spicy you want to be and he will be healing off some of the damage that Farina takes away the key with this team is to never get hit because if you take too much damage then Goro won't be able to take you back up over 50% very easily. Um, my rating of this team is scuffed out of 10. It technically works, it's technically good, but I would never recommend it over something like this, which is just much more consistent and much more comfy. And using this is like Farina, there's better things that you can do with your Farina that have a better synergy. I would much rather just use Farina on your other side and play the proper mono geo comp. Um, you can also use Bennett if you say don't have Zhongli or something. Um, it was okay. Although Ido, yes, he is buffed by defense primarily he still gets buffed by attack just not as much then it does need an absurd amount of er so be aware of that it's fine but it's nothing it's nothing crazy but i think the nice thing is unless you're fighting against geo immune enemies which let's you're, you're never going to do that in the abyss because you can just use them on the other side but ito is just a rock solid character geo damage is able to break through all types of shields and this team has a bow character you can flex another element if you need but you can also just brute force your way through stuff the caveat is that it requires very high investment to brute force through things like that and to brute force through shields that aren't that when you don't have the right element so once again geo is something that has a high vertical investment ceiling but not a great free-to-play floor yes ito has some free-to-play weapons so does you know so do all these characters but it's so much better if you're willing even if you are free to play if you're willing to really invest the primo gems and the resin you're going to see much better returns i wouldn't just expect you know to throw on some mid artifacts and actually be able to clear the abyss that's going to be hard to do Moving into Ito's build guide, you're definitely going to want to level 90 him. Uh, being a defense scaler, it makes a huge difference. Um, his talent priority is number one, normal attack, number two, burst, number three, skill. He's a character that once again, he scales off of raw stats. So eventually, I would look to crown your normal attack and get the other two up to level nine if you really want to main Ito. For his weapons, I'm going to refer you to the master sheet that was linked by kachingmains.com. And this is just this is just exactly what the rankings are. I was reading them off for memory but then I'm, I preferred to show you some sort of visual so this is the best one I found his signature a pretty sizable 28% increase over the free-to-play option one of the better signatures for sure in terms of gain especially since the raw stats that it gives him and aside from giving him raw stats there's not much that you can do to increase the team so I I personally do recommend either going for the red I recommend going for the red horn if you're serious about maining him serpent spine pretty solid option r5 is actually pretty close to red horn but in practice i really hate waiting for the stacks personally and getting the battle pass five times is kind of a lot like that's kind of a lot of money so uh beacon a good option skyward pride if you don't have energy in your artifacts is a really good option because he does need energy navia's weapon even though the passive is not that good and the high base that's not that useful it's still a decent white blind decent black cliff decent don't get it just craft the white blind and then the other five stars are all below that or all the other four stars are below that so definitely serpent spine or or his signature are the ones to go for and then white blind if you don't have those scoured pride a good option as well for artifacts he needs like 130 135 er so you don't quite want to go for an er sans but like if your build has absolutely no er you you, you might consider it but otherwise you really want to go for a defense sans do damage bonus always the right choice unless you're playing with three teams then you could go for defense and then crit damage or crit rate circlet whatever gets you to that one to two ratio the only set worth using is the husk of 
Jacqueline in Dreams, but fortunately it is available in the strong box. And there is a couple more characters that use, or that at least can use the Ocean Hue Clam set than there used to be. So it's not as bad as it used to be for farming if you have like Baiju or something like that. But overall strong boxing is gonna be the way to go to get your pieces. My Edo stats are not as good as they could be. 190, 196 crit value and not like a crazy amount of defense. Like we had defense there. We got some ER here, nothing really good here. Some ER here and some ER here, some attack, which is kind of half useful. It's like, they're not that good of artifacts. It's just, I farm this domain for the last long while. And this is just the best I have for now. It's okay, but know that again, he is based on raw stats. So if he was as well built as my Raiden, he would be performing a lot better. And speaking of vertical investment, let's talk about that now. The number one thing you want to do is make sure you have Goro C6. Um, Goro C6 gives you 40% crit damage along top of the defense and all the other buffs he gives you. I'm, I build mine on four piece exile. Normally I use fav, but I accidentally foddered all my exile pieces. So my new ones have no crit rate. So I'm using sacrificial bow. That is another option you can do. Um, his talents don't matter that much. His skill is the one you do want to level up. The others you kind of leave. So that is the first thing. Now, if you're watching this and it's right now with the current banner, the best thing you want to do is get C0 Ito and get as many Goro as you can. Then you can get C0 Chiori and get as many Goro as if you can. You don't want to ever get more constellations of Chiori. You want to go, if you still don't have C6 Goro, you want to go back to the Ito banner and keep wishing until C6 Goro. Then you consider going on the weapon banner. And this is a pretty good weapon banner for Ito main. So if you already have C6 Gori, you already have your Chiori, you can go for the weapon banner. Um, Red Horn is a great, a great option for him. This constellation is the one in C2 make him easier to play, but they don't actually increase his damage a crazy amount. So that's why I said that the kind of the order of operations is what I did before, you know, get Ito, then get Chiori, then get his weapon, then you can look at his constellations. I think that it's better to just invest in the other things that I mentioned and learn about his damage and how to do his combos rather than getting his C1 and C2. Because if you're playing C0 right, this isn't more than a 10, 15% increase over his C0. As you get to his c6 you know that does increase his, uh, his him quite a bit but i don't recommend ever going there i think kind of the sweet spot for primo gem investment is c0 ito with his weapon c0 chiori with or without or with with or without or with her weapon and of course c6 goro and at that point you're kind of at the sweet spot i don't really recommend i don't i don't, I don't like to recommend constellations but i also want people to have a lot of fun with strong characters and not feel regret so if if you're not willing to go for that level of investment, then I just recommend going for a different character personally. And I also would get ready and buckle down to make some good artifacts. I personally don't mind going for good artifacts. Like I don't care, like Raiden's like a hyper carry character. And this is sort of, I, I look to min max my characters and Edo is a character that will reward you for doing that. So that's what I recommend. And then final vertical investment piece is Chiori, worth the upgrade over Albedo. This one's really, really tough for me. Like if you already have Albedo, say you have Albedo, you have Cinnabar Spindle, you've invested into him. Is it worth it to get a brand new character, build them up from scratch? I think it really comes down to how happy you personally are with your Edo team. I think that her power is noticeable. The upgrade is noticeable. Like it's a much more noticeable upgrade for, than it is for Navia teams, for example, even though Chiori still was worth it for me as an upgrade Navia teams, but mostly because I like her as a character. For Edo, I think if if you would like a power spike for your Edo, then I do think Chiori is worth the upgrade. But I think if you're happy with Albedo and like you have, you know, a crowned skill, it's going to take, you know, again, all of those resources to build up another character to support your Edo. So it is worth it, but is it worth it for you? Only you can really decide. Again, I don't think Edo's constellations, early constellations are that impactful. I think she's probably a similar increase. Like if you already have R5 Serpent Spine, you probably get more from a Chiori upgrade than you do from his weapon, realistically, aside from the quality of life. Chiori's also more consistent than Albedo because her const her constructs, they're not technically constructs, they can't get destroyed. So in addition, she she is a bit of a quality of life in, in addition. So overall, like, yeah, I think she is, but that doesn't make it worth it for you. Only you know your account, you know, how much you play Ito, how you feel about your team's damage currently. So she's a worth it pull, but she's not a must pull for Ito, if that makes sense.
For gameplay tips, I think I was able to finally learn his combos. There were a few different combos I tried. The first one being this one from KQM. And I thought the combo was pretty good. I was able to do it. You can watch the demonstration video here. The other combo that I used, I got from JSTERN, which is right here. Normal attack, and then your burst, then your normal attack, then your skill, then three normal attack, then your charge attack combo until it ends with his final slash, then four normal attacks, then a charge attack, then his skill, then a charge attack. For me, by the time I got to this last charge attack, I didn't have my Geo Infusion anymore. Um, I'm still pretty sure it is the best, um, the best combo that you want to go for and that you can get used to. I found it very fun, very good. I like his play style a lot. I like doing those combos. I like I like his play style. I think he's very, very fun. Um, rotations, obviously, you can start with Zhongli's burst, Chiori's burst, then her skill into Goro's stuff, and then Ito comes in and gets access to all the buffs, and then you do the combo, and that's uh, Bob's your uncle. So for power level, value, and versus others, Ito is a character that, I mean, it, he has low value. His low value, I think he has decently high power, depending on where his investment is. At low investment, I'd put him lower down the tier list. At high investment, he closes the gap. So he gets more value from high investment than other characters do. If you really invest into your Yai aggravate artifacts, you won't get nearly the same return as Ito's artifact. So I think Yai starts a lot ahead, and Ito closes the gap as you get closer. So I don't think that, like, let's assume that if, if you assume kind of lower investment, I think he's sort of one of the worst power five stars, especially considering how rigid he is with his partners and how high investment he needs. Like if you don't have C6 Goro, if you don't have Chiori, you know, you're just using Ito with white blind, some mid artifact, Zhongli, he's not going to carry your account to a nice 36 star E clear. But if you invest him, he will, and he'll work in many different types of content because he can shield break, he can do AoE, he can do single target. He doesn't need a grouper to hit large AoE. Like it's really, really good once you get to that threshold. So value, low, power level, it depends. But I don't think he's weak by any means. Like if you invest into him, if you like him, he will be worth it. I know you're probably sick of me saying, you know, he's, you have to invest into him, blah, blah, blah. I just want to make sure that even if someone's skipping through the video, trying to decide if they should get him or not, that they hear this because it is important. And I don't, and I, and it is true. So hopefully it's not getting too repetitive. If, if you want to see where I put him on the tier list, check out the video linked at the end, which is my ultimate tier list. I don't think I've changed my mind from anything I said there, even after testing him for a long good while, except that I do find him a lot more fun than I thought. His playstyle is very engaging and very fun. And then obviously we got to compare him to Noel. Um, the thing is, Noel was kind of creeping up towards him. Some people thought she was better than Ito. I personally think that Noel is a little bit worse than Ito, and that is my current current spot. I've, I tested Noel a bunch without C6 Goro. I have to test her again now that I do have C6 Goro. I think before Chiori, there was more of an argument to be made that, that Goro, that uh, Noel was a bit better than Ito. Personally, I find Noel, it's a bit difficult to keep up Noel's healing against aggressive enemies with Farina on the team as well find her shield can break and things like that. Um, not having red horn and having serpent spine instead really hurts. I think Noel is very good. And a lot of people will be say, oh, you don't need to wish for Ito because you already have Noel. The thing is you don't need to build Noel. There's other teams that are better than Noel already. I think that is the biggest pro for Noel over Ito though, is that she actually does synergize with Farina, right? Despite me saying, you know, that I, that the synergy hasn't been that good unless like the synergy isn't that good unless you really, really, really invest into Noel. But that being said, the synergy is there if you do invest into it properly. And Farina is really good for the team. So you can go, you know, Noel, Farina, Goro, Yolan, or Nora, Noel, Farina, Goro, um, you know, Albedo, or Zhongli, or Chiori, if, especially if you have Chiori's C1. So I think that I would probably say that Noel is still a bit worse than Ito, but pretty close if you build her properly and use Farina on the team. But I think that the fact that, say that, say they're even, say I, give, say I grant that they're even, but Ito doesn't have to use Farina. Farina and Noel does, I think that I would say that Ito is better. Like even if the teams are the same, I'd say that Ito is better because he doesn't need to use Farina to maximize his teams because Farina can do a lot better than Noel in terms of having really powerful teams. So that's kind of my take on the comparison, but I will acknowledge that although I did test Noel a lot before I had C6 Goro, I haven't tested her as much after. So I'm going to go do that now before I edit this video. And if I really change my mind on what I just said, then I'll, I'll add in more. And if 
not, then you know that I pretty much stand by what I just said. After testing a bunch of Noel, I found it was pretty good. I pretty much exactly stand by what I said before. It felt pretty comfy, but I do think I prefer so overall. Finally, I did want to compare Edo to Navia since they are both Eo Claymore DPS. Overall, I do think Navia is the much better character. I think Navia is one of the top PS. I don't know if she's a contender for like best yet. I think that's a pretty well established category, but I do think Navia is one of the top DPS, and I think that that's a very impressive feat considering how many DPS are in the game. I don't think she's always better than Ito. I think Joe's AOE is very, very impressive. So that's that's something he has over Navia. Navia is definitely better. He'll target or smaller amounts of AOE. She does okay in AOE, but Ito is real good performance in AOE. So I think Ito definitely has his place. Like I don't think completely outclassed by Navia. I do think that she is probably a tier above Ito in terms of the overall power and a more valuable DPS as she more flexible. For future prospects, I mean, he kind of just got what he needed. Um, yes, we could see a healer, a geo healer that allows you to play Farina, but it's kind of like, I, I, I'm I, starting to share the sentiment that a lot of people had, and Farina's kind of in a lot of teams. It's nice to have a team that doesn't use Farina. Um, I don't think it's necessarily a pro to not use Farina, but I don't think, but I think it's so many teams use Farina well that it's not really a con if you can't, because, you know, Novalette might be using him, Raiden might be using him. I mean, Raiden doesn't always use them but sure so many characters can use farina that the fact that ito can't use her that well isn't really a negative and i don't think that you know even if we got a geo healer you have to kind of replace two of these characters one for farina one for the healer so you know we just got chiori you know maybe you replace your so you'd really re you have to kind of replace zhong lee and chiori and unless that healer is doing a lot of damage then farina's buff isn't really being that well used so i don't know i don't even know how good that really even would be for Ito. I'm not sure. Maybe a different shielder. I don't know what they would do though. I think Ito is kind of, he kind of has his perfect team now and he is in a good place. I think he is, I think he's buffed. I know I said I wouldn't change where I'd put him on the tier list compared to before. I mean, he is objectively better than before with Chiori. I'm just not sure if that's enough to bring him up a whole tier or anything. I'm not sure because Albedo really was the weakest link of that team. His damage is just low compared to the new meta. Um, Not even new meta. It's like he was outpaced by Yolan despite Despite him being buffed by Geo, by, by Goro, despite, you know, being buffed by the Cinnabar Spindle, despite all the buffs Albedo received, he was still outclassed by Elan. So to finally have a proper upgrade in Chiori, I don't see us, I don't see his future prospects really getting that much higher, but we'll see. Nothing comes to mind though. And then for overworld and aesthetic, I mean, I actually think he looks sick. I think his design is really, really cool. Um, I think he's got a really unique design for Genshin, which is awesome. For overworld, probably going ER Sans is going to be your best bet. He does okay damage outside of his burst because like he has pretty good scaling, but he kind of really wants his burst. So, I mean, you could even use Fav and an ER Sans to use him. Probably not the best overworld character, although he is good for mining so that's good once again if you want to see where ito lands on the tier list check out my video right there and just move him up a couple spots because now he has a new best in slot teammate with chiori and let me know your thoughts on ito take care bye for now